Thank you for joining me. I'm going to be tying the spawning mantis shrimp today. So we want to start with an orange or pink type thread. I'm going to attach on a bead chain eye. Um, depending on the size of hook you're using, it's either going to be a small or a medium. Today I'm tying this in a 6 uh, size hook. This is a Gamagatsu SL45 hook. And you want that, um, you want a small bead, bead chain eye when you're tying a smaller hook like this. Okay, so we do X wraps to lock that into place. And then we just want to wind down to about the bend of the hook here. Okay. Next we're going to take some uh, zonker strip and we're going to pull off a little piece. Don't need a lot of this zonker strip. Want it to lay pretty flat. We're going to tie it in pretty high up on the hook. You don't need this really long. Um, if this was a longer hook, we could tie it in, you know, give a little more room on the back end, but go ahead and fill up the hook with it. Okay. Next, we're going to take some craft fur. This is like a tan color. Okay. And we're going to pull off a pretty hefty, generous clump here. We, we want a lot of this. Because this stuff is kind of messy, hard to mess, uh, hard to cut, hard to pull off. You can take it in steps, take a few different clumps, put them together, type of thing. All right, that's about the amount that I want. Now, if you've got extra long stuff like this, you want to go ahead and um, pull the really long hairs out. You don't need all that. Um, you want this tapered, but not, you don't need any of these super long hairs. So, uh, there we go. We want to measure this out, um, to about double the length of the, uh, zonker strip. That's about right. Measure that, cut it off at a square. So it's easy to tie in. Okay. Next, we're going to take a single strand of this gold, and you can use pearl, you can use whatever color you want, um, of this crystal flash. And we want it to be just a tad bit longer than our rabbit fur. I'm sorry, not rabbit fur, our uh, craft fur. I'm going to tie in on one side, bring it around, and then tie it in on the other. Okay? Clip them to about the same length, and that's going to act like antenna. Then we want to take a piece of rubber legs. We want to tie this into about the same length as our craft fur here. Make sure it's angled on the one side. We can bring it around and tie it in onto the other side. All right, we want to measure that out to about the same length. Cut that. Okay, next we're going to take a little tuft of, of uh, craft fur that we had extra, um, we're going to go ahead and dub this in. No need to waste any, just use the, no need to cut more, just use the little piece that we, uh, we just cut off. Usually it's the right amount of, like uh, right length of strands to dub this in. Okay, it's about enough.
Okay. Then we're going to tie in our next piece of crazy legs. We want this a little shorter. So we're going to go ahead and cut this in half. In fact, a little less than half. We want to cut off. We don't. We don't need a. We still want this fairly long, but that's about right. Go ahead and tie that in. Okay. Then we want to do the same. We want to just dub right over top of that wrap. When you're dubbing, you don't need a ton of this stuff. Okay, then we're going to take that shorter piece of rubber legs. We're going to tie that in one side, tie it in on the other, just like we've been doing. Then we're going to dub right over top of this again. Then we're going to take this time a little bit more dubbing. We're going to span it over the thread a little bit longer here. We need a little more to work with. Get that in nice and tight. And we're going to go over the eyes, cross over twice, and then we're going to cross under and under again. And then we are going to build up the head on this. Make a nice clean head. And then go ahead and whip finish. Then we're going to epoxy the head here. Uh, I don't have my UV epoxy, so give me a moment. I'm going to have to mix up some materials. Okay, I am back and ready to epoxy. Before you do, you want to make sure and you clean up um, all the extra hairs up the front here. Um, they'll get in your way while you're trying to epoxy, and it's a big pain in the butt. So make sure you get these nice and cleaned up. And then we can epoxy that on. Just a little bit. We don't need a lot of this epoxy. Use your bodkin to spread it around. Make sure that it's nice and even and coating all that. You definitely don't want it over top of the eye because then you're uh, going to have trouble putting on your, your line. Alright. And there is the finished mantis shrimp. If you like what you see, please uh, uh, subscribe to my channel. I've got many more coming here. Um, that subscribe button should be popping up right about now. Um, and uh, there it is. Go ahead and give this a try. It's a great, great fly for bonefish. Um, but any fish that, you know, eats shrimp, um, it definitely has a nice uh, buggy look to it. Um, and if you have any questions um, or... Uh, have any suggestions for flies that you might want to try um, send me a message and I'll go ahead and uh, give it a try and thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time